Hi, I'm Ingrid Zip, and welcome back to my YouTube channel! On this channel, we talk about technology, entrepreneurship, and personal finance. Today's topic is going to be about money lessons you never learned in school. It's mind-boggling we learn so many things in school, but we rarely learn anything about money and money management in the formal education system. Maybe it's a conspiracy theory because obviously the more you spend, the more you contribute to consumerism, and the idea that consumer debt is actually acceptable in many cases for lots of families actually just makes credit card owners and the man richer. No matter what you believe, I think it's good that we improve our financial literacy and try to augment our understandings for our own financial well-being. It's never too late to get smart about money whether you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, or beyond. The first money lesson that you didn't learn in school is how to save money on your taxes. Taxes can be the single biggest expense for people in their entire life. A person earning 100k annually will actually expect to pay 700,000 to 1.4 million dollars in taxes across their lifetime. The government, obviously, and the powers that be aren't going to educate you on how to pay less in taxes, so it's something that we have to educate ourselves about. Different types of income are actually taxed differently. The first type of income is earned income. This is actually the worst type of income in terms of taxes because it's taxed at the highest rate and it has the fewest tax deductions. The second type of income is business income. Business income is only slightly better than earned income because you can deduct your expenses from business income as they pertain to your business and you're only taxed on the profits from your business income, not the net amount of income you make in your business. The third type of income is investment income. This is actually the best type of income in terms of taxes. Long-term capital gains on investment income can be as low as 20%. What are investments and what is investment income? This generally pertains to real estate investments and stocks. The tax bracket for long-term capital gains is 20%. For real estate owners, the tax bracket can actually be as low as 0%, provided that with the gains from your real estate sale, you buy more real estate. Um, then you can actually reduce your taxes on that profit from your real estate sale. When you compare the tax bracket of 20% on long-term capital gains with the average 25 to 50% tax bracket for earned income, it's actually a really big difference. So the best type of income in terms of taxes is actually investment income. With respect to investment income, it may be wise to open a 401k with your employer or a Roth 401k. These investment accounts offer tax benefits to you as you save for retirement. The second money lesson that you never learned in school is how to talk about money with your friends, your family, and your acquaintances. When we go to dinner parties or we gather amongst friends, we talk about health, career, food, and travel experiences. However, money management and personal finance is rarely on the list. We might talk generally about career aspirations or how to get into a certain field or how to be successful in a certain area, but we don't really ever talk about personal money management which I actually think our generation is really going to change. I think there's a lot of YouTubers talking about personal finance. A lot of online business owners actually reveal their expenses and their earnings for the year in order to educate their audiences. So it really helps everybody the more we know. So you might as well have these conversations at dinner, talk to your friends and your family, and learn from them because the more we know, the better it'll be for everyone. The third money lesson that you never learned in school is how to budget. Budgeting is telling money where to go before it's even in your bank account, before it goes to Uber Eats, random shopping on Amazon, random subscriptions that you may or may not be using, you should budget your expenses. There are awesome budgeting apps out there like Mint or YNAB, but the most basic setup to budgeting is the following, and you can do it in an Excel spreadsheet. Calculate your income for the month, then add up all of your expenses, then do some subtraction, figure out the difference. Now what's left over? That is how much money you have for random accessory items and different things that you want to do. Figure out how much of that leftover income after your basic expenses you want a lot to investments. So put that away for investments and then the rest is how much you can spend each month on random stuff. So do that in a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper, whatever. Just have those numbers mentally available to you and just practice and practice doing this so that you always know how much you're spending each month. The fourth money lesson that you never learned in school is the difference between looking rich and being rich. We see a lot of advertisements on the internet, at least I do, for random gurus and people claiming to be able to teach you things. You see a lot of big houses and really cool cars and Lamborghinis and etc. etc. But theoretically, a person with a Lamborghini 
could have less in the bank than the cost of the Lamborghini. This is a very American problem, and as someone who was raised by a Cuban immigrant, I don't really fully understand it. But the idea that having nice things is equated to wealth, whereas a better definition of wealth, or at least the one that I subscribe to, is one that's presented in the book Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki says that wealth is the amount of time that a person can survive um, given their assets without having to do a day's work. So he doesn't measure wealth in terms of monetary things or even a dollar amount, but in terms of time and freedom that a person has to operate without um, making any money. So true wealth is having more in assets than you have in liabilities. What is an asset, you might ask? An asset is something that puts money into your pocket. So an asset could be a stock, you know, a portfolio of stocks, bonds, or real estate investments. What is a liability? A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So your mortgage, even though it, you could be paying off a property, is a liability because it takes money out of your pocket each month. And then your monthly expenses are liabilities. True wealth could be considered having enough income producing assets to cover your monthly expenses each month so that you don't have to worry about making money yourself. The fifth money lesson that you never learned in school is how credit cards work. Many Americans think it's okay to only pay the minimum on their credit card balances each month. What people don't understand about credit cards is the hidden power of your credit card's APR. Most people see an APR and think that if their APR is 20%, they're going to pay 20% interest on the money that they spend on their credit cards. Credit card interest actually compounds daily, so you have to take 20% and divide it by 365. Then whatever your balance is, um, on your credit card each day, the 20 divided by 365, which is 0.548, that is the interest that you're being charged every single day. So as your balance grows and the interest is applied to it, you could actually end up paying a lot more than 20% over the course of a year. So be aware of the compounding interest effect of your credit card's APR and try to pay your balances in full each month so that you don't end up making the credit card company richer and yourself poorer. And finally, the sixth money lesson that you never learned in school is how to get a great credit score. A great credit score is necessary for almost anything that you want to do in the financial world. A great credit score is necessary for applying for apartments, it's necessary for applying for credit cards, it's necessary if you want to get a mortgage, it's necessary if you want to get a loan for real estate, and really a loan of any kind you're going to need to provide your credit score. There are six key factors that contribute to a great credit score. If you want to know the details and the exact things you should do to improve your credit score, check out my video below on how to get a great credit score. Um, it'll go through the step-by-step -step of what you need to do to get a great credit score. But in summary, here are the six factors that determine your credit score. Number one is your payment history, so how many on-time payments you've paid to the credit card provider. Number two is your credit utilization, so how much of your total amount of credit are you actually using? If you have $10,000 in credit, um, are you only using a small amount of that credit card utilization? Number three is derogatory marks. So do you have any collections calls from collections agencies or bankruptcies? Number four is your credit age. So the average age of all of your different credit cards. Number five is the total number of credit cards that you actually have. It's better to have more credit cards. And number six is the number of hard inquiries on your account itself. So how many times do you have different loan providers checking your account? Each one counts as a hard inquiry unless it's batched in a certain way. So like if you go and shop around for different cars within a two or three week period for car dealerships and they all check your account, that'll count as one hard inquiry. If you're a young person, the best way to start building your credit score is to get a credit card and just have small reoccurring payments that you make on that card each month. Maybe your coffee money or you know whatever you buy regularly each month, but pay off the credit card in full each month and you'll start building your credit score. So when you get out into the real world, you'll already have a great credit score. So in summary, we learn almost nothing about money management in school. So it's definitely our job to educate ourselves and build our own financial literacy so we can have the greatest well-being as we move through life. I put out new videos every Wednesday and Friday, so definitely subscribe to my channel for more. Also, if you're new to the channel or if you're a returning viewer, definitely comment below um, like anything that you want to see or if you have any questions. Um, I'll try to make videos on topics that you guys recommend if you have any recommendations. 
If you are looking to learn to code, I actually have a course on coding, which helps you build a portfolio website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I will link that below as well. Um, thank you for your time today. Oh, follow me on Instagram, um, Ingrid Zip. Yeah, it's the same as my YouTube. So, peace. Hope you guys have a good day.